So, with the final episode of Season 1 for Alia Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian out, I wanted to talk about the journey of the anime itself, the 12 episodes. Now, Season 2 has been officially confirmed, it will come out at a later date, I've speculated that on my other channel, so if you want that kind of news type stuff, I have the other channel. What I wanted to talk about was the overarching journey of this particular season. Now, if you want spoilers, I have the light novel reviews. You know where to find them. They're very easily accessible on my channel, and only yesterday did I upload one. So just look at my volume reviews. I wanted to talk about some of the prevalent issues that I've spoken about in past videos, but highlight a couple of other major issues that I personally have with the mindset of the anime having weak episodes and not having a strong ending to season one which of course again episode 12 was the final episode and those saying oh it had a weak ending and i want to push back on that and i know this is going to really really ruffle some feathers but this is how i see things as a content creator and this is a bit more of a content creator's perspective because i understand the mindset so first i'm going to talk about an anime only's perspective from just a consumer not a content creator and then i'm going to talk about it from an anime consumer's perspective from a content creator's perspective so the thing that of course i've noticed with a lot of anime fans that just consume it is i feel like we've gotten into this mindset that a lot of people just want high amount of things going on like boom 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 major revelations have to happen all the time and one of the issues that i've found with a lot of mangas and light novels that get adapted into romances or even isekais or other types of series but those two because i talk about them the most is you get this situation where you jam five to six even sometimes more volumes into a 12 episode season and they try and cram as much of the story into it and so they have to prune things out so you get this high amount of dot point situations which can feel kind of really shallow and hollow because you don't really feel attached to them because it just feels like they're just going through the major events and when you go through a romance series like this where it's a comedy romance school setting with a bit of a slice of life component to it a school setting is going to have all the normal things a school setting is going to have a classroom clubs your study sessions, your festivals, beach episodes. I know this sounds stupid, but these are kind of the generic bread and butters of what makes a school romance comedy of young teens growing up. There are fundamentals that are built into this. But what separates each individual romance is the in-between, the growth, the development, the trauma, the highs, the lows. And when you're trying to jam six volumes or potentially more into a season, you get rid of all of that. And then when you have a series like this that has only covered three volumes, you've got a lot more pacing. You get to understand a lot more about the side characters, a lot more about the trauma of different characters and how they interact with each other the relationships the highs and the lows and because alia is a character that has a journey of growth to come along with him her love interests you're going to see situations where you're going to be like mm, i don't really like them as much in this because yeah they're not meant to be as easily self-insertable they're characters that have a journey a high and a low a good and a bad and in alia's case she is a difficult individual that's the whole point of why she cannot beat yuki right now in her current form because she is not as easily approachable which is the whole point of the final episode of her saying hey i'm going to grow and he is coming out of his shell and finally showing his true potential of his true genius. His sister knows what he's truly capable of. She's trying to provoke it out of him. And then she kind of sweats a little bit going, oh God, he's actually starting to actually show his true form. And she's panicking a little bit because she's like, mm, maybe I am poking a little bit too hard. Now, from an anime's only perspective, I think a lot of people just want major amount of events and then it feels like it's just generic which is the other thing is where i see the comments of people going oh well this is just generic it's just the same yeah when you take out all of the in between it's gonna feel generic but then straight away people complain about this adding in the non-generic stuff as i mentioned and now suddenly it's oh it's too slow paced i don't have enough clippable moments to shove in a tiktok that's the issue is that people just want to consume an anime through tiktoks and I'm sorry, 
brain rot, short attention spans. This is a prevalent issue. And before someone gets angry in the comment section, getting angry at me, pointing out this, there are scientific papers that have demonstrated that IQ has gone down be since a certain major virus because people have become attached to social media and have started to have brain rot. There are actual documentations, studies, papers showing decrease in attention span in IQ because of these prevalent issues. I'm not the one making these papers, the experts are. I'm just talking about them and bringing them up in a discussion of why I think a lot of anime only fans have got short attention span and they want so much action, 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 major components jammed in. Now, from a content creator space, I think content creators complain about these episodes because they need a good title and a good thumbnail. I've had a saying when it comes to content creators for a while, and it goes like this. Content creators build the video around the title, not the title around the video. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of the times content creators will come up with a title and a thumbnail first, and then they will build a video around it. Rather than making a video and then coming up with a title and a thumbnail that best represents what the video is about. And the reason why I think this has become a big issue is because a lot of content creators will come up with a title that says click click worthy as possible clickbait whatever you want to call it clickbait can be good and bad but it's important to get clicks to get, make a good thumbnail a good title that gets people's attention but a lot of the times they will create a title that doesn't really represent their own opinion or in these cases they will want something out of an anime like constant moments to make it click clickable and that's what I think the issue is, is with a lot of animes, is that if an anime is a slower paced series that is about character building, world building, and all these kinds of things, content creators get angsty at it and go, oh, I don't like it. Why? Because I can't make good enough titles and thumbnails out of it. Because example would be in the final episode, well, I can't put in Yuki defeated and Alia and him kiss. They're together now. Whoa, thumbnail title. That's what they want. But because it's actually a conclusion to an overarching story that is long building and not just some quick TikTok moments, they get agitated and go, oh, well, actually, this episode's weak. And the reason why is because, oh, they didn't kiss. They didn't. Yuki wasn't defeated in an epic montage of epic fight between two dragon lords. Woo! I know I'm being a bit facetious here, but I'm sorry. This has become a problem. Content creators need that, and that's why you see a lot of showman content creators do much so better. Because you've got the likes of, and again, not hating on the animes, but you see a lot of these power showmans. They're high action, high intensity. Boom, 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 boom. So they make for good thumbnails. Oh my god, Natsu defeated against this new opponent. Whoa, instant clicks. Lucy just took, threw her top off for the 60th time. Whoa! Natsu just shoved his head up a woman's tush tush. Whoa! Like, that's the thing. There's a lot of crazy moments that go on in those animes. But sometimes you want a show that's a little bit slower. Look at Feyrem. Even though it's super, super, super popular out there, it doesn't quite do as well on YouTube. Now, some people say, oh, but look at all these big YouTubers that have done videos. Yes, but if we compare to other animes out there, a lot of these shows that are a bit more slower just don't quite get the attention. Why? Because they're not as TikTokable. They're not as clickable. They're not. You can't make a short 30, 60 second video of a high intense moment. Now, when first Alia sometimes has like, feelings in Russian first came out, we had a couple of those. Yuki, Alia with the feet situation. We had a couple of those moments. That's when the initial hype came in. And then the story focused more on the characters, more on the world, like the establishment of different components moving together. Then people started losing interest. Why? Because it now was more focused on the characters and the story and not those short clickable moments. This is an issue that I see with con content creation and consumers. Is everything is about getting as many attention and clicks as possible. And so it's forcing people to consume anime in a different 
fashion. I actually had a whole different video that was like a 20 minute long video that I ended up scrapping the other day. And it was basically talking about, is anime getting worse? And it was basically me discussing about how, no, anime is not getting worse. It's how people are consuming anime has changed. And the general idea was that people are consuming anime differently than how we did 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago because now we've got social media as a component. We've got content creators. And rather than sitting there and exorb, exorbing yourself in a big and vibrant world, we're kind of getting into this situation where everything is all about high action moments. And if there isn't enough of those, then people lose attention. Now, of course, other shows like Fairy Tale, Naruto, One Piece have been around for, since then. But how we consume them is still very different. And if a show has a lot of actionable moments, and that's not saying that those shows are bad, I'm not knocking on them, because I love Fairy Tale, I love all those types of animes, but I feel like those animes are seen as superior because they're much more content creator friendly while the slower ones require more analytical, more thought process. You sit there and you wonder why. Why does Alia have such a difficulty working with other people? Why is she sh so shut off? Why is he the only one that she can connect with right now in the story? Why is Masha so weird around him? Again, I'm not spoiling. Why is Yuki and his relationship so weird? What is their family issues? Why is he such a genius that's just holding himself back? Why is he such a dark and gloomy individual? What's the deal with the maid? All these other things. And what's the history between Yuki and him and their past with other characters that have interacted with? There are things being built up. But I feel like a lot of this issue is come down to that it's just not fast paced. So they want it jammed quickly. I'm just saying how I see it because I think it's a problem, and I've noticed it even in myself. I became a, a, a proponent, I wouldn't say a victim, but a proponent of doing that same mindset, because when you do content creation, and it isn't just YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, X, Discord, you are building content and you're creating, and then you've got all the consumers. We're both two parts of a puzzle. So you can't just blame people that create content and go, oh, well, I'm innocent. The consumption of it as well is also a major component and how we're consuming content. And I just think how we're consuming and how we're creating content is what's creating this dictationship of, oh, this show's good, this show's bad because of that change in atmosphere. It's just how I see it. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I am very sure I'm going to get some very vibrant comments disagreeing with me. So I definitely look forward to those. Again, I will be continuing to read the light novels for Alia Sometimes Has Her Feelings in Russian. As I just uploaded Volume 5, as of, up, as of recording this video, that's the one that's out now. And I will do Volume 6 later on when it comes out. So again, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.